Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm announcing you. Ah, okay. Good afternoon. Um, as you can see from the steadily dwindling ranks of attendees, DebConf is drawing to a close. However, after DebConf is before DebConf, so here is your preview for next year's DebConf in Curitiba. Hello, everyone. I'm Paulo. Here we have the local team in Brazil, from Brazil, uh, Daniel, Samuel, Can Lucas Canashiro, Arthur, Siqueira, and Ellen. Probably, and Valesio is there with the yellow shirt. Probably you saw everybody here on the last days. And uh, I would like to talk about uh, what you have, what you are planning to DebConf in Brazil. This is uh, our logo. This animal is this animal. It's a tamanduá, and we 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 want uh, we are using it because he is uh, he is a very good animal, and he has a problem to be extinct from Brazil. Well. Welcome to Curitiba. I'm, I'm going to show a video to you that will talk about Brazil, about Curitiba, in English, but by the way. How about Europe, Germany, Italy, Poland, Portugal? or the Middle East and its customs. Fraught with aromas and flavors. Maybe America, bold, enterprising, modern, or even Asia with its tradition and capacity in overcoming obstacles. All these places are here. In Curitiba, in Southern Brazil, the origin of the name of the city is in the Tupi language, spoken by Brazilian Native Americans, meaning land of the pine trees. For over 300 years, this city has been attracting people from all over the world. The city currently has 1.8 million inhabitants and 3 million in the metropolitan region. It is one of the most innovative cities of its time. In the 1970s, the city designed an efficient mass transit system, inducer of urban growth. The system's integration enables reaching any district with this just one fare. The city established environmental protection policies by implementing large public parks, as well as a waste recycling program. Today, it has one of the world's highest green area per inhabitant ratios. It is also known in Brazil for the cleaningness of its streets and the attitude with awareness of its citizens. Curitiba has one of the country's best educational standards. It has four universities, among which the oldest one in Brazil. The city also offers major centers of technological education, plus a basic education network featuring excellent indicators in educational outcomes. Curitiba and its metropolitan region have facilities of countless companies from all over the world. This is the outcome of incentive policies added to the local high level of quality of life, to its enterprising posture and educational level of the population. The city is serviced by a modern airport and is a mere 100 kilometers from one of South America's largest export ports. It is located at an important highway crossroads between Sao Paulo, the largest city in Brazil, and the countries of the Mercosul, Uruguay, Argentina, and Paraguay. It is located close to important tourist attractions such as Vila Velha, site of an impressive geological formation, and Iguazu Falls, one of the planet's seven wonders of nature. The city has an intense cultural life with theater festivals, major shows, and international events. It is also one of the country's main gastronomy and hotel park hubs in Brazil. Curitiba, the world is here. Welcome. So, 
So we find this video from the City Hall Curitiba, and we'd like we will show to you because it's very nice. It's in English, and the, they show many and many images from the city and the, some cities around Curitiba, like Foz do Iguaçu, and in uh, Vila Velha. That he, if you go, you can go there before or after DebConf. Well, uh, in July uh, we have. Um, a temperature, a temperature, a little freeze. So for us, at least, <laughs> between seven and twenty degrees, but Celsius. But sometimes we we have a zero or one Celsius. What is very good for us. So we have snow in seventy-five in two thousand thirteen, as you can see, <laughs> and. The, this is, this is Daniel's grandmother enjoyed the snowstorm in Curitiba <laughs> for a few minutes, maybe five or 10 minutes. We have snow there in 2013. And the, we know how to make snowmen, right? <laughs> nice. Um, we'd like to show some photos uh, about Brazilian food, like coxinha. And brigade coxinha is um, soft, yes. And the brigade is sweet. We have with chocolate. We have feijoada, Brazilian barbecue, and a lot, a lot of fresh salad. So don't worry with um, vegans or vegetarians. We have a lot of food. By the way. Uh, even the, the people that eat uh, meat, we have salad too. It's very usual in Brazil. We have a buffet with uh, rice, beans, beef, and salad too. It's very usually for us, fresh salad, like uh, lettuce, tomatoes, and everything. Well, Brazilians like to give a hug. So if you, if you have a friend, uh, Usually, the, the, the friends like to, to hug each other. Don't be afraid if a Brazilian wants to give a hug. <laughs> and, uh, and the kiss on the face, right, is when you, you meet someone, it's very usually you, you kiss on the face. But uh, in Curitiba, it's just one kiss. But in other cities, it's two kisses. And the other, and the other cities are three kisses. <laughs> It's, it's very different from one city to other, but in Curitiba, it's just one kiss because um, Curitiba uh, is more, yes, <laughs> one kiss is enough, right? Um, well, like I said, you can, do, you can make tourism in Brazil before or after DebConf. In the Paraná State, where Curitiba is, we have Foz Catarata, Catarata Falls in Foz do Iguaçu City that we showed, showed in on the video. We have Vila Velha, and uh, probably we will arrive in Rio de Janeiro or São Paulo because our, our, this, this are our international airport. So if you, can, if you want to stay some days in Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo, it's a great idea. Um, we have if Amazonia Flores that is not near from Curitiba, it's far from Curitiba. And the Northwest region is, has wonderful beaches. And uh, by the way, I was born there, but I live in Curitiba now for many years. But if you, if you like beach and the beaches with warm water, you, you should go to Northwest. So this is a map where you can see Rio de Janeiro, São Paulo, Curitiba, and Porto Alegre, where was uh, DebConf in, in DebConf 4, uh, just to, to have idea where is Curitiba. From São Paulo to Curitiba is just one hour by plane or six hours by bus. Uh, the travel by bus is very nice. The bus is very comfortable. So if you, don't, if you don't want to go by plane, it's a good idea to go by bus. It's very, very nice. So let me, take, let me show, somewhere we will, take about, we will talk about the venue and all the yeah. other stuff. So 
Uh, Curitiba has two uh, public universities, and our venue is going to be on one of them, called UTFPR. It's Federal Technological University of Paraná, and it's located in downtown. Uh, here it's on your bottom left. And right next to it, there's a big shopping mall and also a bus, bus stop. And the hotels where we are planning to do the accommodation are, are located like two blocks away from the venue. So that's not going to be a problem at all. Uh, th this is the same place where we did the last two mini Depcons in Brazil, with UTFPR. And it has just this big auditorium for 409 uh, seats. They also have the mini auditorium with 100 seats and many classrooms between uh, 20 and 50 seats and they have like this, these big tables with power plugs in there and also uh, Ethernet plugs. And they are all located on the same campus. And also has a big restaurant inside. Uh, the restaurant uh, currently has two floors. This is a photo of the second floor and we are going to serve the meals there. And this is right in front of the entrance of the auditorium in the mini auditorium. It's like a open garden where we can use it as a hack lab and there will be Wi-Fi there. Uh, and this is like the hall between the, the open hack lab and the restaurant. So you have everything uh, connected to each other. Also the place for the job fair. Uh, the place, the university is very accessible. You can say there are ramps to uh, all of the, the rooms you need to go. Uh, there are elevators also. And, but probably we, we won't need to use that because it is all on the ground level. I think maybe one of the rooms is not gonna be on the ground level, but it should not be a problem. Uh, this, we, are, we are trying to reach some hotels, so there are uh, at least uh, three hotels. It's, it's actually two hotels and one hostel, and this is one of, of them. And the, I, I'm gonna show two of them here, and both are, are, are like one block away from the venue. Uh, National Inn with about 200 uh, rooms and Aladdin Hotel with 80 rooms. So these are our current dates. And uh, on the last day, it will be a Sunday, there will be a handicraft fair visit and also Brazilian barbecue for those who stay there. But all the talks are gonna end on Saturday because people have to, have to work on Monday and stuff. And do you want to say something? Here in the hotel, we are showing that, that room, that conference room, because we will uh, equip, uh, make a hack lab inside the hotel too. So we, we use this space. There are other rooms too that we can use to the hack labs, and we probably will have hack labs on the venue and in the hotel. So who, wants, who prefers to stay at night working or doing stuff, something, can use the hack lab on the hotel. That is it, some comments you'd like? That I forgot something? Okay. Questions, please? Easy questions, please. Concerning the hack labs uh, at the venue, you said you have a lot of classrooms. Is there also one big hack lab possible? Probably, we want to use this space, this open space, and uh, put some wall. Let me find here. No, no, there's no name. Here, we're planning to put some walls uh, around and the do the hack lab in this space, other space that you are looking to, but it will be somewhere there. Yeah. 
Then concerning the temperatures, because it's winter in Cape Town, there was no heating in the rooms. How is this in Brazil? Uh, there won't be any heating in the rooms, but uh, as as you see, the minimum that you will find is five degrees, but that's only in the early morning. So like at 10 o'clock, it's gonna be something between 10 degrees and 20. It's not usual to use heaters in there. But to have air conditioner in the all rooms or auditoriums that you can regulate the temperature. So, yes, can, so the, the air condition can also heat. Yes, can, yes, yes. Okay. But, sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah then that's fine. But and I remember that uh, in, in Cape Town, mm -hmm. when you sit the whole day in a hair club that was not heated, it was getting very cold for no. <laughs> a lot of people. Yeah. It will be cold for us, so to, we are... Hi. Um, I would like to know the laws um, about concerning uh, sen selling alcohol are, and another question, are there any close microbreweries that are able to sell some kegs for us? Thank you. Okay, so there are a bunch of local breweries and we are planning to connect with them to get some beers and stuff. Sure. But we aren't, we aren't allowed to drink inside the venue, so that's the main reason we are, we are looking for this uh, hotel hack lab and we, will, we, will, we want to sell beers in there, but maybe we will also set up like a beer truck very next to the venue, but the hotel is like one block away, so... That should not be a problem. Yeah, there are some beers. Yeah, there are lots of local breweries. I think it's the city with most local breweries in Brazil, probably. Yes. More questions? What about using a bike in the city? Is the city very flat or very hilly? Is it common to use a bike there or is it dangerous to use a bike in the city? Uh, I ride a bike daily in Curitiba and uh, like most of the city uh, has bike lanes. So it should be very easy to ride a bike and also very safe. And the city is somewhat very plain. You're gonna find some hills but not it's not going to be uh, that much, so we should be perfect for, for riding a bike. And we are looking for, uh, we, uh, we are talking with a bike rental service to see if, if we can arrange some bike to, to get inside the venue so people can rent the, them from there. Uh, is the hostel that you mentioned, is that the dorms? As in, for people who apply for a accommodation bursary? Okay. Yeah, uh, we prefer to use the hotels first. Okay. And if it's necessary, we will rent the hostel too. Okay. Because the hotel is, is near for the... Yeah, the hostel is not that close as the hotels are. Hi. I want to know if there will be a karaoke. In Heidelberg, we had a karaoke and it was very fun. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, we hope so. We, ha we are planning to make some different things like um, uh, um, vegan fair, for example. We are planning to do a... Um, football game. Football game, yeah. Somebody already challenged us. Some kind of table with, uh, with foods that you can, you can prove there to taste in Brazil, local foods. And uh, yeah, let's go party that too. <laughs> There are some karaoke bar in Curitiba, close to the venue also. It's easy to set up in a club. Yes. Yeah. And what about activities and places to go with children? Yes. Uh, um, I'm not really sure, but there is a zoo. There are lots of parks. If you're into that, you are going to really like it. You will have like at least six options for big parks in there. So there is this zoo, and I, I know that there are lots of attractions for children, but I'm not sure uh, what they are actually. I know that there is one inside the shopping mall, but it shouldn't be that fun because it's inside the shopping mall, you know, but. Yeah, every, every Saturday on downtown, maybe 10 minutes from the venue, the venue 
uh, the city hall is doing uh, putting some uh, activities yeah. yes to try to, uh, to play there to balloons and everything to yeah, like party. like like ping pong tables and stuff like that uh, chess games every Saturday Hi. Two things to consider while you're planning. One, uh, because you're talking about hack labs in multiple locations, sometimes it's difficult for newcomers, people who are shy, and, and people who have different time sense um, to spread out so much. It's more difficult for people to meet each other if they don't have a central place. So you might think about how to hold people together that way. And the, and the other thing is that uh, uh, food is complicated, and for example, vegetarians will not be happy with salad. Yes, so it's, yeah. <laughs> it's more than salad, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not meat dinners with the meat removed. Yes. It's a different kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I simplified very much, but yeah. uh, we have we have it, we have three persons on the uh, uh, local team that it are vegetarians. By the way, one is vegetarian, two are vegans, so they. They, they are helping us to make a nice meal to... But it looks like you have a challenge with the hack labs if you want to have alcohol and you want to have a number of other things a, a block away. So I think you'll have a challenge this way to yeah, hold people alcohol together. Alcohol is the main problem. Yeah. <laughs> and a warm hack lab where people can sit together. Yes. Unfortunately, time's run out. Mm. Thank you very much for all your feedback and questions. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. Just a last two. A last two. Uh, huh? Please uh, give, uh, send to us all ideas, ideas that you have. Don't be shy. We are grateful to, have, to receive many kind of ideas that you have that you would like to see on DebConf. Right? Thank you very much. And next up is unfortunately the last event. It's the closing ceremony. Thanks. Bye.